Uh, hi everybody, uh, I'm Jamie from Conglomerate Games. Um, we are a video games company specializing in what we call serious games. So games that have uh, an educational or a kind of healthcare focus. And hopefully I'll be able to give a bit of insight of what it's like to start a games company out of university. Um, we're relatively new. We only went full-time June last year. So I'll try and kind of give my experience and our kind of journey and the processes we went through. Um, uh, any questions, Jeff, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll try and answer them as well. Um, so to give a bit of an idea about what we do, um, just to give an example, one of our games is a, a game developed around the physiotherapy care of children with cystic fibrosis. So it's this chronic lung condition where they have to do these really boring breathing exercises and because they're so boring, no one does them. So what we've done is using this device here, which can be attached to their physiotherapy device, we can detect their breath and kind of turn it into input for the computer, which we've then taken and we use their breath to play our game. So we make it a bit more fun for them. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of, those are the kind of games that we do um, as well as work for hire for various clients as well. Um, so to give you an idea of our journey, we started kind of in university back in 2019 as a, a, a third year project module. So we kind of came together and we're connected to Microsoft and UCL who built the sensor, which I was talking about before. And this was part of our university project, but we wanted to take it further. So we kept kind of developing it and we, uh, we finished our, our module, but kept going and thought we should start applying to different grants and, and competitions. And we were lucky enough to win the International Series Play Award, which meant we got to go to um, Montreal and Florida to kind of show our game off, uh, which was really important for us because it kind of started building our network of, of potential uh, clients and people that we could um, kind of reach out to for support and getting our game kind of spread as well. Um, and from there, we kind of realized we wanted to take it even further and form a company around, around serious games. Um, but what we needed to do was kind of build up a, um, a bit of cash to kind of get us going. So we applied for various competitions within Scotland and the UK. One of the first one being um, the Converge Challenge, which has three kind of categories. Um, we were, we went into the impact category uh, because we're kind of a serious games company, we can apply for more gen generic competitions, like gen generic business competitions, because we've got a bit of a, um, a social impact base. But just for, for reference, there's a creative challenge as well that Converge offer that I know that uh, Yaldi Games, another games company based in Edinburgh, actually won this year, which is great. So please don't feel like uh, you're a games company so you can't apply for normal business competitions and grants and stuff. Um, so yeah, we, from there, we, we had a bit of funding. The, the runner up prize got us 10,000 pounds of cash, which is really important to get us started. And we actually officially founded then late 2019 whilst at university. And I should say that this is where being part of Abertay was really helpful because of Bell Street Ventures, which is the kind of business advice group. I, can, I think I saw Simon's name in chat. He's the guy you wanna to talk to if you're part of Abertay. But I know most universities will have some kind of form of this. Dundee has a great one. I know Strathclyde has a great business support group, but pretty much any university will have some version of this. Um, and yeah, we, we, we officially founded the company. It's actually quite easy. It's only like 10 pounds. I mean, I'm talking about the, the form you have to fill in is easy, not actually doing it. Um, and yeah, from, from there then, we needed more funding, so more competitions. The Unlock Challenge got us, I think, another £10,000. Uh, they also provided business support. Um, and between them, then we could apply for the UK Games Fund, which has been really pivotal for us because not only did they provide some funding, but they also let you uh, access their communities of other games companies, which is really important because you can kind of see what everyone else is doing and see what you should be doing as well, which is a big thing for us. Um, and yeah, they've continued to support us as well, st still are, which is great. Um, from there, then uh, I finished university. So up until now, this was all still done while we were working on our dissertations and stuff. And it was, it was pretty tough having to balance the two, but I'd say it's, it's a good idea to kind of test your ideas while you're at uni because you've kind of got a bit of a, a, 
a support net that, or, or like a safety net, sorry. Um, and you don't need to rely on the company to be successful um, to succeed. Like there's not as much risk there if you kind of do it while still at uni. It is a lot hard of hard work though. Um, and yeah, thankfully from the starting cash from the different competitions, we were able to go full time then in June. Um, I can tell you that just to be really blunt, so you all know for figures and stuff, we had around 30,000 pounds starting cash, which may seem like a lot, but for four full-time employees, that's not actually that much. It doesn't get you very far at all, as I'm sure the other guys will be able to agree with. Um, and yeah, so what we needed to do was kind of apply for more funding, various places, Santander universities was another one. Santander are affiliated with a lot of universities in the UK and they run this big national competition. Um, we were lucky enough to go through that and they offer business support as well. And then Unlocking Ambition was it the next one we kind of went to. That's part of Scottish Enterprise that we're now part of. Um, and yeah, just I just kind of wanted to give a kind of <laughs> the, the really roundabout way that we've kind of gone about setting up a, a games company. Um, but just to kind of give you a very, broad idea of the things that that are available in Scotland um, and in the UK. There's so much that you can access. Um, for example, like I don't really know what we'll be doing next, but there's a, a scheme that we're looking at, the Kickstart scheme, which is a government run initiative for getting interns. I know a lot of uh, games companies in Dundee are utilizing it or going to utilize it. Um, but yeah, there's there's loads of different support schemes uh, that you can access. Um, just I kind of listed a bunch of them that I could think of. So if you want to take a, a screenshot of anything, feel free to take a screenshot of this. But we've we've spoken to uh, all all of these. They've all provided support in some way at one stage. Um, Henderson will give, of course, at the bottom. Had that of them. They've been a great help for us. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the journey we've gone through. Um, the biggest challenges I'd say was that I had no idea what I was doing, still don't really. I probably would have came to this talk as well, which is good, um, to hear what David and Colin have to say. But that's one of the, that's one of the great things about games is that you can learn off other companies that are further ahead of you. Um, personally, like Pocket Size Hands and Hyperluminal and Tag are all in Dundee and they're great to learn from. Um, just kind of see what other people are doing and see and copy them is, is my, my biggest insight. Um, and I had, I had obviously zero experience starting a, starting a company or in a games company especially. Um, but yeah, I just had to learn as you go uh, and learn from what everyone else is doing. Like I said, we had no money, like personally, and obviously student debt. I'm from Northern Ireland, so I didn't get free universally. Um, but... I would say that you just need a head for for managing cash flow as well. It's not you can't just have a game idea like starting a, st making a game and starting a games company are two very different things. Um, you need to kind of have a f idea of cash flow and stuff as well if you want to make make a games company. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, you know, at the same time is pretty tough, but it did have its benefits in that we had a bit of a safety net if it didn't work. Um, so yeah, uh, tips. I'd say is make sure you want to do it. It's really hard. Um, so make sure it is actually something you want to do because there are easier things you can do. <laughs> get, get a job. It's easier. <laughs> um, but another one would be network as much as you can and practice doing it. So come to events like this and talk to people that you're interested in talking to. Um, don't do it like you, you need something out of them or you, you're doing it to get something from them because that comes across really, really badly. But just for an example, people I met at the serious play conferences um, have actually become clients further down the line. And that wasn't because I was trying to sell to them or anything. It was just because I was just chatting to them and they remembered us um, further down the line. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'd say don't worry if you fail, because if you do start a company, it looked like it's really impressive to even have tried. So being able to say that you have, I'm sure will get you um, places at other companies as well. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. And hopefully something was um, positive from that. <laughs> and any questions, feel free to ask me in the chat or to follow up afterwards. Thank you.